This is a 30 degree drop in temperatures. Power consumption also dropped by 50 watts, and all without losing a single drop of performance. Today, we're fixing Ryzen 7000 because I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't want my CPU running at 95 degrees. Turns out that all of the cool tuning stuff that we've explored previously with the 5000 series, that also applies here to the 7000 series. In fact, it's even more impressive this time. And what I'm about to show you is pretty insane. It's not just saving a couple of degrees and a few watts of power. On the 7700X, we go from pulling over 135 watts to just 85 watts. We go from sitting at that 95 degree cap that makes everyone uncomfortable to hovering just around 60. Again, no performance lost here at all. On the flip side, if you are happy with that 95 degree temperature limit and the power consumption of Ryzen 7000, I'm going to show you how you can squeeze even higher clock speeds and more performance out of these CPUs at the same temperature and power level. And the way that we do this is with the PBO2 curve optimizer in the BIOS, also known as Precision Boost Overdrive 2. Some of you might remember this with the 5000 series, it's basically the exact same thing. Essentially what we're doing here is taking the voltage and frequency curve of the CPU and adjusting that so that the processor uses lower voltage at a given frequency. So whereas before it might have used 1.25 volts for 5.1 gigahertz, now we're telling it to use 1.15 volts for the same frequency. It's a simplified example, but that's basically what we're doing. This is the most effective and simplest way to undervolt a Ryzen 7000 series CPU. Now every BIOS will be a little bit different, but there should be a section called Advanced CPU Settings or AMD Overclocking. Once you're there, select Precision Boost Overdrive, switch from Auto to Advanced, and you should see some more options appear. Then go down to where it says Curve Optimizer, select All Cores, and then change it from Positive to Negative. The next part is a little bit more tricky and depends entirely on the silicon quality of your particular CPU. The magnitude value that you see right here is basically the amount that you're shifting the voltage and frequency curve of the CPU. The max value that you can input here is 30, and that's going to give you the best results. However, it's only going to be achievable on the highest quality of silicon out there. Surprisingly though, my 7700X review sample can hit that. My 7950X review sample, on the other hand, was only able to achieve a value of 15. So it really depends on the quality of your CPU. I'd actually recommend just starting with a value of 30 and then just walking it down until things are nice and stable. And you'll know it's not stable because benchmarks will crash, you won't be able to get it into Windows, stuff like that. It's just like testing out a normal overclock. So by enabling this PBO2 offset, we're basically getting a free overclock on the CPU. That means higher clock speeds and performance at pretty much the same power and temperatures. We can see this here in Cinebench. Temps are still around that 90 degree mark. Power is still exceeding 100 135 watts, but our clock speeds increased by a hefty 200 megahertz. We're now sitting at 5.3 gigahertz for all eight cores, which is pretty nuts, especially considering, again, we haven't increased the power or the temperatures. Here's what that looks like when plotted out. Temperatures and power are slightly more favorable, but the biggest difference is, of course, that clock speed increase. So this would be the option if you're actually okay with Ryzen 7000's temperature behavior out of the box, and if you want to squeeze a bit more performance out of it. Our Cinebench score actually gets a 4% boost here compared to the out of the box performance, which again, for actually slightly lower power and temperatures, that's pretty decent. Even with a PBO2 offset of just 15, we get a nice little free bump to performance. And again, it is a free bump to performance. It's not like overclocking where there is also a temperature and power increase. So the results there are pretty interesting, but most of you are probably interested in a power and temperature decrease, especially after seeing the stock Ryzen 7000 performance. And what you can achieve there is actually actually more impressive. So keeping our exact PBO2 offset as before, minus 30 for this particular 7700X, and then going to the same section of the BIOS, you want to select Platform Thermal Throttle Control, and then select Manual. Here is where you can change the default temperature target of Ryzen 7000 from 95 degrees to something that you're more comfortable with, let's say 85. With this configuration, you still get a nice bump in performance over stock like we saw before, but instead of the CPU chasing down that 95 degree target, it's now capped at 85. This is definitely a more optimized profile all around in everything that we look at. The clock speeds are higher, the power is lower, and so are the temperatures. It's like a triple win scenario. But for a lot of people, that's still a bit too warm. The next configuration is my personal favorite though. Basically, instead of a temperature limit, we're setting a power limit. Basically, if we combine our PBO2 offset with a power limit of 85 watts for the 7700X, that allows us to match the clock speed and performance that we get at stock 
but at a hugely reduced power consumption and temperature. We go from running above 90C to just 61. Power, that drops by over 50 watts. Then take a look at the clock speeds. It's the same 5.1 gigahertz that you get out of the box. Looking at our Cinebench scores then, it's the same as stock, merely a few points between them, which you could easily chase up with a slightly higher power limit of say 90, 95 watts. So this is a really, really optimized profile for these CPUs. And I'll just highlight that this is completely different to only setting a power limit or enabling something like eco mode. Uh, with standard power limits, you will experience a performance drop as we can see here. So here's a little screen capture of this exact profile in action just to prove that it is indeed stable and I'll also note that the power limit that I've set here 85 watts that is completely up to the user if you have more cooling available you could definitely go a bit higher and if you have far less cooling you could set something like 70 watts it is completely up to you and your build now in addition to Cinebench I also tested a few games out there as well just to make sure that nothing funky or weird was happening and yeah there's no measurable performance drop between running the 7700x at stock versus is our much more optimized profile. Valorant in fact sees a tiny bump to performance, not that that's going to be really noticeable, but the more noticeable part here is the power draw and temperatures under gaming load. They do drop a fair bit. In Valorant there's a 20 watt decrease compared to what we see at stock, making it lower power in fact than the 3700X. I also did some pretty quick testing with the 7950X, uh, pretty much the same approach. As I mentioned though, I was only able to achieve a minus 15 PBO2 offset there, but we still do get some pretty decent results. There I was able to match stock performance in Cinebench but while running 20 degrees cooler and at 50 watts lower power. So still definitely worth doing. So look, if you're someone who's pretty keen on Ryzen 7000 but you're not keen on the temperatures and the power levels that you get out of the box, definitely consider this as an option. It's just really easy to do. No reason that you shouldn't be doing it uh, if I'm honest. Even if you're happy with the power and the temperatures at stock, I mean, as we saw, you can still get a nice free performance bump. No increase to power levels as we saw. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.